What is your name, please? My name is Michael Halliday. My name is Gordon Ash. My name is Anthony Morton. My name is Norman Dean. My name is Tex Riley. My name is Jeremy York. My name is J.J. Merrick. Only one of these men is entitled to use all these names. His real name is John Creasy, and he will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Sally Ann Howes, Barry Nelson, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Winston Cigarettes. Well, it gave you a little different opening there, didn't we, panel, huh? Oh. That's all those names. How about uh, that? Choice of multiple cues there. Yeah, multiple what? Multiple. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say well, it. Well, I'm going to be great. <laughs> Hi, Sally Ann. How Hi, are you? Bud. Fine, thank you very much. Sure. How are you? Fine, thanks. Good. Nice to have you back with us. All right, let's get the business here, shall we, as fast as possible. Open up that first envelope and follow along with me. I, John Creasy, am an author. Under my own name, I have written more than 150 books. I have also written over 300 books under a dozen or so pen names. After 740 rejections, my first book was published when I was 23 years old. My latest novel came out today. In between, I have written some 45 million words. In one single year, I wrote 22 books, an average of one every 17 days. The 450 books I have written would make a stack taller than a four-story building. Signed, John Creasy. <laughs> Panel, we bring you three gentlemen, all claiming to be John Creasy, prolific author, I think that's the proper expression for him, we start the questioning with Barry Nelson, if we may, Barry. Thank you, bud. Number two, why do you use so many names? When I was young, I was hungry. <laughs> and my publishers wouldn't take too many books under one name. Pen names are a kind of fashion. Well, uh, I see. Uh, number three, uh, what type of books do you write? Well, mostly crime books, mystery books. On these crime books, do you start with the ending first in your mind? No, I, I make up my mind gradually while I'm writing. I have nothing specific decided. Uh, do you, uh, how, many, uh, uh, how many days does it normally take you to write a book? Oh, about uh, a few weeks. Supposing then. you had a chance to take six months on the book, do you think you could do it better? No. City. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what are your other activities? I like to garden at home very much indeed. I spend a lot of my time after I finish writing around noon in my own garden. And you've been able to do all this work just writing from what? Nine to noon? Or what time I like to start? get up early in the morning and I start at sunrise usually. I'm an early bird. Number two, what sort of a typewriter do you use? Well, I've been away from it for some time, but I, I'm almost sure it's now a Hermes, a Swiss machine. Number three, what sort of a typewriter do you use? I use an Olympic. Number one, when you start, how old were you when you started all these books? I was uh, just about 15, 14, 15. And you had how many rejections by the time you were 15? I had somewhere in the region of seven, in fact, I know for sure, 740 of them. What perseverance. <laughs> Tom Poster. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, uh, number two, uh, Chris Surf just wrote a, a, a fascinating book. Do you know who Chris Cerf is, number two? I haven't the faintest mm -hmm. idea. Well, well uh, number three, he's Bennett Cerf's son, and he just wrote a, a book. Do you know it? No, I know Bennett Cerf, but I don't know the book. He's, I think it's Ransom, is it? I don't know. Do you know number one? I know the, the name of the I'm no. afraid I don't have a clue. Thank you. Number two, who is Carter Brown? Carter Brown? Is he, I think, is the Australian author of Mysteries. Thank you. Sally Ann. Thank you, Bud. Number one, could you tell me what does a galley proof look like? 
It is a long sheet of paper which comes back from the... I see. Thank you. Uh, number three, could you tell me who your publisher is? Here? Here. Uh, Scribner is my publisher. Yes. I see. Number two, do you... Thank you. Number two, do you have an agent? Yes. Number three, do you write at home or how do you write? No, I write at home. I type in the morning. I have my special hours for that. Thank you. Um, number one, could you tell me, how did you choose your pen name? They sort of come to me as I write. Uh, number two, did you have to clear your... That's pen? all the time we have, I'm sorry to say, but there is time for you to mark your ballots if you'd like to, and I'm sure you would, just to please me, if for no other reason. <laughs> mark your ballots, if you will, please. Only to please <laughs> Only to please me. And uh, mark them at once without change, and of course, no consultation as you vote for number one, number two... Our number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? No. Well, no. How are you, Barney? I'm fine. How are you, Sally Ann? <laughs> <laughs> Is that That's right, very Barney? fast. That's very fast. Is that right? <laughs> Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, in spite of the fact that they didn't know about Chris's great alligator book, I voted for number two. He gave me the correct answer about Carter Brown, who's one of my favorites. Sally Ann. I voted vote. for number one. He seemed to have very definite ideas on his times that he uh, wrote and everything, and still had a little time for his gardening. So I voted for number one. Very good. Barry, what is your choice? Well, I voted for number two, Bud. I'm not uh, sure that it is number two, but he had that smile on his face. He still has it like he sees us all as potential murder victims for future... <laughs> and Kitty. I voted for number one. Uh, number two said he wrote he thought on an Hermes, and I think all that ha kind of work would have to be done on an electric typewriter. You couldn't do all that work otherwise. And although number one looked very young to have done this kind of body of work, I thought it was he. Number three said ransom, and, and I think even an English writer would know that it's Random House. So I voted for number one. Singing in terms of murders and ransoms, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have it anyway. The votes are in. Let's go with what we have and see whether we've come into the truth circle or not, as we learn now. Which one of these gentlemen actually is the extremely prolific author? Will the real John Creasy please stand up? Ah! <laughs> ah, two stalwart gentlemen came through on that one very nicely, very handily. Uh, let's find out about the other two. Now, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Michael Wynn Wilson and I'm Eastern Representative for Radio Press International. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Edgar Franklin. I'm a captain of the Montplaisir restaurant and also Santa Claus of Macy's. Oh. <laughs> you enjoyed your visit to us. You brought us a great deal of joy. That always starts an evening off well, I think. Makes it go fast, too. Uh, checking the score, we find there were two incorrect votes, and that's a good job of fooling on this panel. They're hard to fool, believe me. And at $250 each, that's $500 you take with us. You also take our best wishes for happiness, whatever you use it. And yes, sir. Is it possible that there would be the name of a book? Uh, I can't go by the author, Mr. All right. Creasy. Give, what give are some the name books of... that we might be able to Just read quickly, if you will. that are Current. Anything which has got Gideon in the title, anything Gideon's fire, Gideon's week, Gideon's day, the whole series. Boy, they'll Gideon. keep you up at night. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you get the five hundred dollars, of course, from uh, Winston cigarettes as well as a carton of Winston's on your way out. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> All right, let's keep the good time going with the most enjoyable sixty. And now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Emily Hogefein. My name is Emily Hogefein. My name is Emily Hogefein. Very well, panel. Will you kindly follow with your copy and listen as I read? I, Emily Hochefin, am part of a team representing my country in the 8th International Women's Field Hockey Tournament. Field hockey requires a great deal of stamina. A game consists of two 30-minute halves with a five-minute break in between. 
There are no timeouts allowed and no substitutions for injuries. Men's field hockey is an Olympic event, but the women's competition culminates in these international tournaments, which, like the Olympics, are held every four years. This year, 400 players from 24 nations are involved. Signed, Emily Hochefin. <laughs> Three young ladies all claim to be, as you heard, Emily Hochefin, international field hockey star. And we start with our own field hockey star, Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Number one, what position do you play? I play center four. Center what? Center four. Center, center four. Forward. forward. Ah, number two, what is the thing you uh, hit with a stick called? It's called a hockey ball. Is it called a puck, number three? No, it's not. What is a puck, number one? That's what you use for ice hockey. I see. Number two, what is your hockey ball made of? It's made of cork. Thank you. Number three, do you have your own <laughs> personal hockey stick or is it issued to you during the game? No, you have your own one. Number one, where do you play this uh, match? I play this match in Baltimore. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, one of the great uh, uh, field hockey coaches in the country is named Shirley Tidwell. Do you know where she coaches number three? No, I don't. Do you know Shirley Tidwell? I don't. You don't know the name? Do you know number two? I think she's from England. Thank you, number two. Uh, uh, number three, uh, how do you put a ball into play? How do you put the hockey ball into play? You put it on the center line and the two mid forwards take a bully. Number one, what is a bully? Um, that's the beginning of a play. Not the big mean girl on the other team? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And number one, how do you put the ball into play after it goes out of bounds? You roll it in the field again. Thank you. Sally Ann. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, could you tell me how many on a team? Uh, Eleven in one team. I beg your pardon, in Eleven one team? Eleven players in, in one team. I yeah. see, thank you. Uh, number two, could you tell me, uh, what would you consider a foul? What is, could well, you give me one? Well, when you put your stick over your shoulder, or you are not allowed to touch the ball with any part of your body. I see, thank you. Uh, number three, could you tell me how long is a hockey field? It's about a hundred meters long. Thank you. Number two, could you tell me, um, say you were playing a uh, center position, yes. are you allowed both sides of the field? Yes. You are. Number one, do you agree with that? Yes, I number do. Number three? Yes. You do, thank you. Um, number... You sound like an old hockey player. <laughs> I am. I'm not a captain, but I bet I won't guess right. Barry Nelson. <laughs> well, uh, what is the name of your team, number yes. two? My team? Yeah, don't you have a name for it's it? It's called Hick. Uh, it's called what? Hick in Dutch. Oh. Uh, number three, what about these injuries? You say that uh, you're not able to substitute. Are there more injuries uh, among your playing than uh, one would normally expect uh, or less? More than how many you mean? Well, now, supposing seven people got injured, uh, yes. what would happen? You'd be playing four against 11? Right. So uh, do they try to injure other players as a oh, result no, of taking no. that? What kind of a... Re who, who referees these games? Is it a man or a woman? A woman. And do you have... That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say. It amazes me no one asked where they were from or what country they represented and at any time. However, that's an interesting little sidelight you can mull over as you get ready to mark your ballots, which I ask you to do right now, if you will, please. And of course, without consultation, which we never permit, vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Everyone? All right. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three. She, she's... She, it looked like she hadn't done this kind of thing before, and the other two looked like real good liars to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sally Ann, what is your choice? I voted for number three. I, I like number one's answers and number two about not lifting the stick higher above your shoulder, which I always wanted to do as a child, hit everybody on the way, you know. Did, huh? And so um, I voted for number three. She also has short hair, Anytime which is a Sally great Ann help. Raised in that this hockey game. stick you should have seen well, Sammy run. <laughs> Barry, your vote. Uh, I voted for number three also, but I thought she could take care of the bully very well. I didn't ask where she was from because I thought I could get that from her accent. All righty, <laughs> Kitty. 
I voted for number one because I didn't ask where they were from. I took for granted with a name like Hochgeveen, they were Dutch. And I thought number one looked more Dutch than any of the others, and they all gave marvelous answers. Okay. So there we have it now. Three for three, one for one. And with that, we go to find out which one of these ladies actually is a member of the an international hockey team, field hockey team, and a field hockey star. So will the real Emily Hochfeen please stand up? Thank you very much. Do me a favor and say your name for me. She says it so beautifully and I say it so difficult. It's so pretty when she says it. Say your name for us. Would you? Pardon? Say your name the way you really say it. Um, Emily Hogeveen. It's pretty that way. You yeah. don't stumble or stutter, you know. It's real, real beautiful. Oh, my, that's real nice. Number two, what is your real name and what do my, you really do? Uh, my name is Eva Burnett and I'm from Sweden. And I've never seen a field hockey game my whole life and I've never been to Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, you got the greatest number of votes. What is your real name and what do you do? I am Thea Th Th Engelbert. I'm born in Indonesia and I'm a UN guard. Oh. <laughs> well, you brought us not only a great deal of beauty, but a great deal of pleasure. And we hope we brought you the same. And when you hear the score, I know you'll smile because with three incorrect at $250 each, that's $750. Look at those smiles now. That comes to you from Winston Cigarettes, of course, and a carton of Winston's on your way out. Thank you, ladies, for being with us. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> now let's bring the curtain up on a little different kind of fun. Emily Hochfeen. I can't do it right still. It's a place for the uh, Netherlands team. Delightful. Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Milton Zeiss. My name is Milton Zeiss. My name is Milton Zeiss. Panel, please listen as I read and follow with your copies, too. I, Milton Zeiss, own and operate the world's only correspondence school devoted to the 4,000-year-old art of tattooing. My 19-lesson course includes the history of tattooing, how to shade and blend colors, how to make your own ink, and the use of hypnotism on the nervous client. With my course come tattooing machines and supplies. I also sell tattoo equipment, and my complete catalog contains thousands of suggested tattoo designs. My clients include universities, hospitals, animal breeders, and even fish hatcheries. People use tattooing for everything from simple decoration to adding eyebrows. Among the many famous people who have worn tattoos are King George V of England, President Theodore Roosevelt, King Frederick of Norway, and Winston Churchill's mother. <laughs> Signed, Milton Zeiss. <laughs> all right, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Milton Zeiss, tattooing expert and teacher. We'll start with Sally Ann Howe. Sally Thank Ann? you, Bud. And number two, as an English woman, I've got to know, where is Winston Churchill's mother tattooed? All over her body. Really? Really. Oh. <laughs> I wish I had an art now. Um, number one, could you tell me, what is your dye made of? Uh, uh, the dyes are made out of, um, a, uh, uh, a, a mineral. Thank you. Um, uh, number three, could you tell me um, what kind of needle do you use? Regular needles that ladies use for sewing. I see. Number two, could you tell me how big an area can you do at one time? A at one sitting? Yes, at one sitting. Well, about um, four or five inches. I see. Thank you. Number three, could you tell me what does tattooing mean in Japan? Uh, it means Barry Nelson. Please, Barry? <laughs> Listen, uh, number two, uh, why does anybody want to be tattooed, really? <laughs> well, various reasons. Some are, uh, well, romantic reasons. Why does the Navy use more tattooing than others? Is that why? No, 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 no. The name tattooing really has nothing to do with the thought behind the, uh, the fact. Well, uh, King Frederick of Norway, where was he tattooed? I don't mean to ask an inopportune uh, question now. Well, as I remember, 
seeing the thing. It was on his right arm. Uh, what, what is the favorite, uh, number one, what is the favorite tattoo? What? A mom and dad with a heart. Oh, that's very touching. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> number three, do you agree that Lady Churchill is tattooed all over? Yes, I do. And do you know what she, what, what are the motifs? No, I don't. Blenheim Castle. <laughs> um, and number one, can you tell me uh, where tattooing was first recorded uh, in, in history? In the uh, Polynesian countries. In the Polynesian countries. How long ago? Uh, before Christ. Number two, is it at all painful? No, not really, not really. Why do people have to be hypnotized then? Well, some people are very shy, some are very nervous. Some are chicken. <laughs> Just plain chicken. Number three, is it ever used for other than cosmetic purposes? Oh, yes, it's used uh, by uh, breeders of cattle, fisheries. Oh, to uh, mark? Yes. I see. Thank you. Tom. Thank you. Uh, uh, number one, what is the nature of uh, Mrs. Her, uh, Mrs. Churchill, or Winston Churchill's mother? I have a feeling her name should be Lydia. I'm sure it isn't. Number one, what is the nature of those tattoos? That's um, patriotic uh, designs. For heaven's sake. I, <laughs> I, I just hope this is true. Can you imagine if it weren't and the whole world were now convinced that Mrs. Churchill had tattoos all over her body? <laughs> but this is his mother, who was an American. How do you like Not that? Not his wife. That gets it into another color, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. And there we go. It's time now for you to take your tattoo needles and mark your ballot. Tattoo your votes, if you will, please. In any color you wish, but do it now. At once, without change. No consultation while voting for number one, number two, or number three. Oh, no, All marked. All right. Tom, for whom? I voted for number one, and I can't wait to hear him explain why he stuttered on the kind of ink they use. <laughs> Especially when he gets home. Sally Ann. Well, I wanted to vote for number one, and I didn't because he did. And number two was so um, talkative and said so much. And number three was kind of quiet. You felt that he had the patience to do all this. <laughs> so I voted for number three. Barry? Well, I voted for number two, but I think somebody should because his mustache is tattooed on it. <laughs> Kitty, that gives you a choice all the way down the line. With whom? I voted for number three because I thought he takes his work very seriously and very scientifically. And when he talked about the tattooing of animals and fish, I felt that this was a serious business, and therefore I voted for number three. And there we go, into the area of the circle of truth to find out whether we stand there with right or wrong, and whether or not we have guessed which one of these gentlemen actually is the tattooing expert. So, Will the Real, Milton Zeiss, please. Stand up. Why didn't I know that? Oh! <laughs> you got it. Sound got it. Yes, Kitty. Okay, okay, Mr. Zeiss, you're yeah. on. Yeah. We'd like to know why, why, you, why did you, you can hesitate? explain it to everybody now. Why did I hesitate? I just couldn't think. <laughs> just a little nervous, I'm sure. Oh. Um, what about uh, Winston Churchill's mother? This is true. What is that? For yes, as I understand it, it's true. She's tattooed all over. Yes. Huh? What, what, what kind of pictures? You said I just Lenham said patriotic Cass I, I designs. I, I, she's really? an American woman, you know, and. Uh, I, I, I presume there would be a murder. Well, we'll have to go into that some other time. Our time is rushing away. If we want to find out about the other two, number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Will Clare. I'm a professor of palmistry. Ah! <laughs> Thank you, sir. And number three, you got most votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Charles Kenny. I'm a songwriter and assistant TV editor of the New York Mirror. <laughs> Please give our best to your brother, Nick Kenny, who I understand is in the hospital, and we're all praying for a speedy recovery. Well, gentlemen, there were one, two, three incorrect votes, and at $250 each for the second time tonight, there's $750 coming your way from Winston Cigarettes and a carton of Winston's on your way out. Thank you, good night, and God bless you. When you give the United Way, one gift works many wonders and helps more people. So give generously to your United Community campaigns. 
Good night, panel, and thank you. It's been exciting. Wish we had more time, but we don't. Good night to all of you, and of course, we'll see you again next week at the same time. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, speaking for Winston's good night, may I remind you once more to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Hudson, Bill Hartman production. <laughs> to Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.